You're watching The Circle. Question. <laughs> How many times in your life have you got really excited about changing or detoxing something in your life only to give up, lose interest or just chuck it all in the too hard basket? Well, Dr Angus Pipe Pike has developed the innovative four pillars of change and says we need to master each pillar in order to make true change. To tell us how, please welcome Angus to the couch. Thank you. Angus, I do believe that people can change, uh, but it is harder than you think. So let's create an example. Say you want to change by doing more exercise, yeah. two visits to the gym a week. Take us through the four pillars of change to make that happen. I think the first thing we've got to realise is that um, the reason that we've struggled with change, whether it be the gym or eating changes or things like that too, is that we've all put it down to motivation and willpower. And mm -hmm. so if we can't make the change, then we assume that we're one of those individuals that just sucks when it comes to willpower. And we kind of admire those other people that are really great at it too. Mm -hmm. So the truth is, is that with all of us, there are more hidden forces that are really pulling in our behavior that we're just not aware of. And so you need to be aware of those. So once we can kind of bring those to the forefront, mm -hmm. then change begins to become much easier. And so the first part of making any change is you've got to why? So why is it important for you to make change? And so, you know, we all know of, um, of, of women who might have struggled to give up cigarettes time and time again, have got pregnant and have instantly been able to give up cigarettes yes. yep. because the why has become much bigger. And mm. so, you know, why do I want to go to the gym? And so there's kind of two things we'd want to address. Uh, you know, what, what are the benefits? You know, what will it really mean to me in terms of, and things that are important to you. So if you're, you know, a mum, you know, that's going to allow me to be a better mum. I'm going to have more energy for my kids. It makes a difference to my health. And then what are the costs of me not changing? And so taking a little bit of time beforehand to really think about these, maybe to write it down from there too, a bit of pre-planning is, is important from there too. So the first pillar we would really talk about is purpose. Why, why is it important from okay. there as well? What so, are you laughing at, Denise Rosewell? Well, the first, he, Mr Pike just said um, to write things down. You write things down all the time. Put it out to the universe, it'll happen. Oh, yeah. What's the next step, Angus? So the next one you want to need to make sure that you have the appropriate skills because um, so in this example here it's not so much at going to the gym is that you're going to the gym to have a certain outcome so if you're going to the gym and not exercising properly you'll spend all your time kind of just talking to somebody on the treadmill ah. next to you yeah so it, you know you need to have the skills to do it as well so you know if it, and people often talk to me about weight loss and so they need to have the motivation and then they need to know the how but we, we're often too focused on the how what do I need to eat and how much do I need to eat and whilst the how is important um, it doesn't mean anything we don't have a reason beforehand from there as well yeah. so how is that part of it too so if we're going to the gym what are my goals with going to the gym what do I want to achieve and then enrolling a personal trainer or, or, or having the techniques mm -hmm. to, to do that as well the third thing you talk about is the social support now I just want to quickly read a figure here if a friend of yours becomes obese it increases your chances of becoming obese by 57% isn't that wild it's just, and then it goes again because, Georgie, if it's a friend of a friend, it still has a huge impact as well. Mm. And so we underestimate just how big of an impact our social support groups have on us. And so for those of you that have tried, again, we talk about cigarette smoking. Again, if you're trying to give up cigarettes, but yet your partner works and your whole mm. workplace work, uh, smokes, then it's really difficult from there as well. But our friends also have a re uh, huge impact on our happiness as well. Because if you've got a friend that's happy, then your chance of being happy. And then again, if you've got a friend of a friend who's happy. Mm. And so scientists and social scientists now are trying to work out just how this happens. We know it happens. But our social networks that we've grown up with really influence our behaviour. And so you'd need to address, you know, who helps and who hinders and so and it's also really nice to have somebody not only supporting you but doing it with you yeah mm. so mm. it's so it's so it's a bit more fun yeah. and you can and you can share the experience together yeah, yeah. so getting back to the gym example you'd, you'd have try and surround yourself with friends who yes. go to the gym so as well. meet, yeah. meet a buddy there might yeah. be one way to go about it because that level of accountability or pay for accountability, have mm -hmm. a personal trainer, mm -hmm. have a social environment there that really supports you following through. And in fact, I was chatting with um, someone a little earlier on about, uh, you know, telling that person at work that's going to keep you really accountable. And it might be the person that you don't necessarily like the most, but you know that's going to be on you if you don't do it. Uh, ah. you, so, you would be that my person at work. <laughs> now, <laughs> we're going to run out of time if we don't get to number four. Great. Soon. So the fourth one is environment. So environment has a huge impact as well. So when I'm talking about kind of changing eating behaviours from there, the best thing to do is don't buy it. 
Okay, don't get into complicated stuff like that too. If it's not the lolly jar's not there, you can't go. That's to work. exactly right. And so you would want to choose a gym that's really close on the way home to work or on the way to work so from there too. So it's easy. You make yeah. it easy for, yeah. you, for yourself. And find a gym that you like. So if you like those kind of big muscle-bound gyms, go there. But if not, find the female fern with that kind of stuff there mm. too. Mm. But environment has a huge impact, particularly when it comes to eating. So closer the lolly jar is, the more you'll eat of them. So <laughs> yeah, environment has a, has a big impact. So I bring. Think the the main thing is to find thin friends. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise you're going to be buggered. Would you please thank Dr Angus Pye. <laughs> the latest from the 10 News Room is coming up right after this short break. You're watching The Circle.